Okay, welcome back to Sactical Survival. And first things first, I would love you to subscribe to this channel and hit the like button and equally any comments, any questions that you have about the topics that we discuss in these videos, then please put it in the comment section below and I will get back to you. So our objective for this mission is to look at two survival rifles that you find commonly in gun shops across the US and Canada. The first being the Chiapa Little Badger, uh, probably the cheapest rifle that you are going to see in the gun shop. This was designed uh, around 1958, it's been around for a long time, uh, designed by the Chiapa um, Rifle Company, which is an Italian manufacturer and a beloved gun for bushcraft, bush pilots, preppers, survivalists across the decades. It's changed very little and when you first look at this little rifle, you kind of dismiss it as a, um, like a child's gun. But it is not, it's a, a very robust firearm. And as I say, in this video, we're going to be looking at, does it have any place in your survival equipment? Second rifle we're going to look at is the Henry survival rifle. Now, in this video, I'm going to refer to this by its military background name, which is the AR-7. Uh, not to be confused with Armalite, it's nothing to do with an Armalite whatsoever, but it goes under the guise of an AR-7. Again, this was developed by Henry Rifles in around 1959. Um, it was designed for a military contract to enable pilots to be able to eject and go into an escape and evasion scenario armed with a long barreled rifle, both for survival, for hunting, and obviously defense. Um, it's changed very little. The Israeli military purchased a lot of these rifles and they go under the guise of the AR-7. And the only thing that really distinguishes the military uh, rifles from the civilian rifles, the military rifles have a metal stop. They don't have this Gucci gimmicky, fold it down and put it into the into the buttstock. Um, I'm not sure whether that's a, a decent enough idea. Certainly, people like it. Um, the, as I say, there's a thousand and one videos on YouTube on how to take this to pieces and put it back together again. It is kind of a James Bondy sniper rifle feel to it. Um, it's built as a survival rifle. It has a great pedigree. But again, we're going to ask the question is, does this have a, a place in your survival prepping equipment? We transported them to the range the other day and set up the range for a 50 yard shooting position and a 100 yard shooting position. The target was a metal Pling target, bright orange. Point of aim was the large target, this one here. Chose this target because number one, you can hear the rounds hit it, gives off a nice loud ping, and you can see the target move when the rounds are, are on it. So, roll the video, and this is what happened at the range. Accurate at this range, is it? No. Nah. Oh, nice! I take it back, it does move it. <laughs> move the little one. Yeah. Thank you. 
German. German, ne? <lacht> So the little badger hit every time at 100 yards and at 50 yards. As I say, putting rounds down this, this little rifle was fantastic. It's a pleasure to shoot. Uh, I had no misfires, anything like that. It just did its job, basically. Okay, then we come to the AR-7. Now, the AR-7 didn't find it very accurate. Out of seven shots, we started finding that I'd get about three on target. Same goes when Dave was shooting it. it couldn't bring it to ting the targets. But when it did ting the targets, it was kind of there. It's almost like you have to fire it and bring the rounds down onto the target. A lot of the um, rounds were dropping short. Uh, low and pulling over to the right but equally when you compensated it didn't quite do a great deal when you look through the pinhole sight on the back sight there seems to be a lot of this this orange foresight um, and to get the the absolute top of the orange foresight in the center of the target seems to dip the barrel um, quite sure what why that is but we tried different things uh, the pinhole at the back can be reversed um, for range didn't make much difference so in terms of accuracy did not find this very accurate at all now with the little badger I'm firing one round it's hitting the target with this I'm firing three or four rounds to find the target being a semi-automatic, you're going to get through more, more rounds. And of course, in a survival situation, you've only got so many rounds to use. So the question on accuracy is, do you go for the single shot where you know it's going to hit every time? And for your dinner at night, you are going to expend one round. Or do you go with the AR-7, a um, lot more Gucci kind of rifle, uh, you go out, find your dinner, but in order to get your dinner, you are going to expend maybe two to three rounds. Um, so, personal preference, I like the little badger over this one. Having said that, if you are in a grey man, urban type survival, and you're using wanting a rifle for defence, the tables kind of change a bit. The problem is with the Little Badger, of course, it's a single shot rifle, which means as soon as the bullets left the rifle, you have to go through the ritual of reloading it. You can do it quite quickly, still quicker than a musket, but you can't put rounds down should you need to defend yourself. The IR-7, however, you have a magazine of seven rounds, I believe, and you can have one in the breech, bringing your, the shootability of the rifle up to eight. The rifle comes with two magazines, so you have the capability of putting down 14 to 16 rounds, give or take, yeah? I'm always a big believer in the three, what we call the three C's, and they stand for a clean rifle, clean ammunition, and a clean oil rifle. Um, in the military, it's one of your standing benchmarks of field craft is to keep your weapon clean at all times. Um, when you go into harbour at night, when you have been through, I don't know, any successive amounts of shit, mud, water, that kind of stuff, 
you want to be cleaning your rifle at the first opportunity. So first up, the little badger is an absolute gem to clean. For a start, there's no working parts. There's no breech block to clean. There's no firing pin. There's no cocking parts. There's no nothing. All you have to do is run a pull through, through the barrel, make sure all the shit's out the rifle in and out the barrel, um, stick a little bit of oil on the extractor, pour a bit in here, make sure it's just generally wiped off and clean, and the rifle is good to go. You can clean this in five minutes. It's fantastic. I always think of the gauge for a field rifle, whether it's a military rifle, or whether it's like this a survival rifle is your ability to strip down the rifle in the field and clean it successfully and this is a 10 out of 10 it wins hands down in terms of clean ammunition there is a thing which we've got highlighted here um, attached to the stock whereby you can clip in rounds of ammunition six get 12 rounds in there and transport it ready to go in your backpack. So I don't like this. I don't like it because it goes against the concept of having clean ammunition and it fails in two ways. Number one, these are really not clipped in. You could put some duct tape around to keep them there but it defeats the, the object. Number two is if your rifle goes through shit, crud, mud, water, and all the rest of it, guess what? Your bullets are going through shit, crud, water, and the rest of it. And again, clean rifle, clean ammunition, clean oil. Yeah. So... Don't like that. I always think that ammunition should be stowed on your person. It should be stowed safely in a watertight, clean environment, whether it's a pouch, um, that kind of stuff. But keep it as clean, clean as what you can. Cleaning on the AR7 is not easy. Um, I'll do a separate video on taking this rifle down for cleaning. I'll not do it in this video.